Last episode, we talked to Lisa Kudrow and you had a blood pressure monitor on the entire time. And we thought maybe we'd check in with you and see what the update is on that. Nothing's, you know, uh, I think wrong with me. Well, that's mm. a whole other thing. <laughs> um, ding. No, my doctor said, uh, I always had great blood pressure. And then more recently he said, huh, it keeps notching its way up. And so uh, he said, why don't we just put a cuff on you when it just takes your blood pressure over a 24-hour period and you just wear it and you forget about it. Um, well, he he lied <laughs> I, because you don't forget about it. It's a giant blood pressure cuff. And then there's a uh, what looks like a catheter tube going from that uh, to a giant uh, World War II walkie-talkie. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to hold that. It doesn't clip onto your belt or anything. There's no place. So, uh, you know, you're walking around holding a large 1940s radio uh, that's attached to your arm. And then every 30 minutes, this thing would inflate and take your blood pressure. And uh, so anyway, I, as you know, wasn't planning on this. I thought it was going to be more discreet. I thought it would be some cool little tiny thing made by Apple that they like put into your bicep and you don't even notice it. No, I didn't realize that uh, technology hasn't really evolved since the Three Stooges <laughs> were doing medical sketches. So uh, this thing kept um, inflating every 30 minutes and I had to lug it around with me uh, for 24 hours. And so it ended up, uh, as part of playing a part of the Lisa Kudrow interview. Yeah, and so what were your results? Well, the results were interesting. Doctor calls me up and he goes through and he went, yeah, your blood pressure's all over the map. Mm -hmm. He said, it's, it's, uh, it calms down at night when you go to sleep, but um, it's, it's these highs and lows. And he said, so walk me through your day. <laughs> and so he started saying, what was happening at this time? And I kept, I had a very good memory for the day before. And so obviously there are times where we're here doing the podcast and I'm sitting here with Lisa Kudrow, who's an old friend, but also a massive star. And so I'm I'm activated, you know? But also, then he'd say, well, what was going on at two o'clock? Oh, yeah. That's when I was having a wrestling match with my head writer. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Sweeney and I were just wrestling each other in the hallway. Huh. Okay, well, what was happening over here? Oh, I think that's when I threw an orange at Sona. <laughs> and And so... Basically, as I was walking through my day with my doctor, it became clear that I may, my blood pressure may not be artificially high. I think I'm just like a Tasmanian yeah. devil. Wait, I'm an insane it's person. purely environmental, but yeah. of your own making. Of my own making, Did you yeah. tell him the truth? Yeah, I told him everything. You told him all that stuff? Yeah. Why didn't, why didn't you lie? Well, because then he'd say, um, you need to be on a very powerful drug. Oh, okay. I need to tell, I need to tell him... Oh, no, no, no. What he said you needed to be on a different type of very powerful <laughs> drug. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, it was just really fascinating to go through the day and realize, oh, but also, I, you know, as you know, I'm, I work out in the mornings. And yeah. He was like, well, what's going on here? And I went, oh, I'm, I'm doing my weight workout. And what's going on over here? I'm running full tilt through my neighborhood, <laughs> oh. listening, listening to music. Oh, okay, then what happens? Well, then I get to work. Oh, good, things must settle down. Well, no. Uh, that's when I, I see my head writer and I tackle him and we fight. Okay. Oh, well, then what happened? Well, I saw Sona mm -hmm. and she had a sandwich mm -hmm. and I saw an orange, so I had to throw it at her. Yeah. Then uh, she threw a banana at me and the fight ensued. <laughs> oh, anyway, it was just, I was, going through my, <laughs> I was just going through my whole day and realizing none of this reflects. My body is probably responding in the correct way. Yeah. And I'm, you know. But are you okay? Oh, I don't think so. No, I think I'm not long for this world. <laughs> but uh, it's, I've had a good run. I've had a really good run. You have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've enjoyed it. I've yeah. had a good time. It's about time. And no one should feel sorry because trust me, I did this to myself. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, I know. You did. So anyway, just, medical science. Yeah. <laughs> I just think you should take care of yourself because, you know. What, You're fine. Are you what just am thinking I going to do? No, no, yeah, no, no. Yes, thinking... I'm only thinking about myself. Do you know what? Okay. what would if it, something would it happens, calm you? Tim, what, what, what do I do? What right. it, can I say something? Would it calm you if I told you that there was a little something carved out for you should anything happen to me? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. Wait, now I want to kill you. Wait, yes. <laughs> Careful. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> no, it's very specific that if I'm... If I'm stabbed to death with an Armenian dagger. Oh, no. <laughs> As I put a, it away. A circa 1902 <laughs> Armenian dagger. How did he die? Uh, he was choked to death using dried apricot. <laughs> it, was roll, it was rolled up. To the tune of the saber dance. <laughs> 
No, don't say the Barrages part. Then when people are listening to it, they're going to say that. The other thing is going to be the coroner is going to be running the blood test and say, oh my God, his garlic levels are through the roof. It's my calling card. It's the garlic killer. The killings are focused in Altadena and Glendale. What kind of, what is this guy? Someone is making, is shoving way too much garlic into a pita and forcing, forcing gangly Anglos to eat it. Ganglos, ganglos, gangly Anglos. Hey, we got another, another ganglo went down. Don't tell me. Yeah, Altadena. No! Get over there. And then they can smell the garlic before they even do the blood test. I got a deceased male ganglo on the streets. We got what a ganglo. What am I called? What am What's I that? called? The garlic grifter. Oh, the, I no. want a cool name. Oh, oh. Come uh, on, improv people. Do it. <laughs> the Armaniac. Oh. The Armaniac. That's pretty Well, good. the Armaniac is loose. <laughs> Another ganglo was found. A six foot four inch red haired, white, pasty Irishman with garlic levels 9,000 times the normal level. Oh, well, who found him? A jogger? Well, a jogger was a mile away and smelled a lot of garlic. So altered her course to go by, and there was the ganglo. And then we knew the Armaniac was back. Oh, All right, well, no. don't worry. I've carved just something, little something out for you. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. All right. Later, Conan's gone. What do I get? Uh, Here you go, Sona. I know. <laughs> a little fruit tree. Oh, that's nice. That's sweet. I'll take a fruit tree. I have a tree in my backyard that you- uh, yeah, The pomegranate you, tree. You're, you're welcome. Yeah. It's responsible for all the good things in your life. It's very nice. <laughs> yeah, I go on every day and- mm. Still with pomegranates. Oh, anyway, okay. um, okay, it's fake. Uh, okay, we can edit this last part out. <laughs> Beware the Armaniac. <laughs>